Good day everyone, it's a beautiful day out today. Uh, we got another video for you guys. Um, we're working on that bad boy right now. Uh, this thing is parked for now. I'm trying to figure it out, Hasn't haven't got to it. I've been away from home for a week, so I tried to do it tomorrow, yesterday a little bit, but anyway, so today we're gonna be working on this bad boy and I'm gonna tell you guys what's up, what happened and um, what we're gonna be working on. Okay, so what we're doing on this car, we're gonna be pulling the fuel pump, I mean, uh, fuel tank. We're gonna have to be lowering the fuel tank. We're gonna be having, we're gonna have to get to the fuel pump uh, where the feed line uh, hooks up. There's a small line that hooks up to the big line that goes all the way to the engine. So we're gonna be replacing that. Why we're gonna be doing that? Well, remember the snow days that I posted some videos? Well, my sister thought it was a good idea to drive in that snow drive around portland she was driving just fine but uh she was bottoming out everywhere it was a lot of snow and she ripped the, all the shields out almost underneath the car ripped the fuel lines out thankfully she didn't rip the evap line out but i'm gonna show you guys underneath there what i'm talking about but uh yeah we ordered the uh, hose we had to wait for it for almost a month because it was coming from sweden uh so yeah today we're gonna be trying to replace it i haven't never done it i don't have video where i'm probably gonna have to buy one soon because at this rate me working on volvos I, i'm gonna need vida um why not so for those of you guys that think maybe in these cars you can uh, take the seat out the back seat and there's gonna be access well i got another thing coming for you um not the case in this car this is a really dumb design there's nothing there. There's no access of any kind to the fuel pump from the inside of the car. So no way you'll access that from there anyways. But uh, to release the seats, I know a lot of people have been asking me, messaging in the groups to how do you release the seats in the P3s. Let me see if I can move this out of the way so I can show you guys. Uh, let me see. So over here, you see the latches in the seats, the front of the seat, there's like a button right in the center where the corner is. This is the front of the seat. This is the side and there's a latch like that right there. If you ever need to take the seat out, there's a latch that you need to press in and that you just press that button in like that and it releases the seat. That's just two, two of them on this side and on that side. So. Yeah, you just do that and I'll pop the seat. I don't see a reason to take it out, but if you guys need to clean the carpet or anything like that here, that's how you take the seat out. Man, this exhaust chop shop, look at it. This is supposedly IPD exhaust. It's no longer IPD exhaust, we got aftermarket. I don't remember what this is, a Magna. Excuse that, that's my, my dolly underneath me right here, making noise. Anyways, look at it, look how crappy that weld is i could have done three times better than that that is some just crappy welds look at this oh my goodness this is just junk the ipd exhaust was so nice so clean i don't know why my brother when he had it why he decided he needed a louder exhaust he should have just left the ipd one alone it was perfectly it was really nicely done but no anyways Let's get to the issue why we're what we're having anyways fuel tank Right here the fuel line There's a feed line that hooks up to here. This is the evap line that goes up on top there You see that how they go up on top of the line of the fuel tank and there's a fuel uh, pump Most likely somewhere right there because this line is short and so was this one that hooks up into here I'll show you guys in a second how long it is but it's somehow i don't know if it goes through here because it was already broken out or it was next to this one i don't know i'm gonna hook it up and i'm gonna see how kind of how the routing looks but uh we're gonna have to drop this bad boy uh lower it somehow so we have access to that line um in this to do that we're most likely gonna have to pull the exhaust the drive shaft most likely pull the drive shaft support bearing or whatever it's called and uh yeah we're gonna have to drop it and then we're gonna have to pull the straps and support the fuel tank somehow because it has probably i think half a tank of gas in here there's a lot of gas so 
anyways i'm gonna try to show you guys how to do it for any of you guys that are interested in doing it but uh yeah we'll do i'll do my best because i don't even know what i'm doing myself so i'm just gonna be recording the important steps during the way that i think will help some of you guys out if you guys are gonna be looking to do this so yeah okay so we loosened the strap on this side i loosened it no actually i don't think i loosened this one i loosened the strap here and then i also took out the hose from the filler neck and we're able to put my i'm able to put my hand up on top here so i can access the line i used my mirror to see where the line clips in so i found out that i need a fuel line release tool i should have known that uh, but uh, anyways i looked on the fcp euro website which one they list and they list this one the 3 8 to 5 16 so most likely i'm gonna need the 5 16 side and i'm gonna try to disconnect and take out the broken part out of it so we'll see how that goes okay so this is the broken piece that was inside the fuel pump or whatever the connection i got the fuel release you need the 716 or 516 so whatever I, yeah the smaller one and i just put it over and then released it the release and then i put a screw inside of there because there was no way to grab it and just pulled it out so i didn't have to drop the fuel tank i just kind of pulled it down a little bit put the screw in released it and just pulled it out so it saved us a lot of time okay so the car is running now as you guys can hear it no fuel leaks of any kind anywhere car runs good no check engine light no nothing on there so let me just take you in the car to show you right here so nothing just as the hood open obviously because i opened the hood Whew, the car is healthy as it can be i am so happy i was able to fix this for her she was waiting a month for this car and this was her only car so i'm so happy we got this fixed now she can enjoy her car she doesn't like any other car she drives the lexus any other car she don't like it she's like i want to get back in my volvo so she loves this car so I'm really happy that we we're able to fix it for her. Alrighty, so I'm gonna test drive it before I give it to her hands. Make sure everything is good in this car. Man, this car is just so smooth acceleration compared to mine. Like mine is just like, I don't know why, it's just like so sudden. Like the second you stomp on the gas pedal, it just like puts you in a seat and just like really, I don't know, it's really <laughs> aggressive compared to this one. This one is just, it's the reaction to the gas pedal when you press it, it's like immediate, but it's really smooth, you know, compared. Mine like takes probably like a second. When you floor it, it takes a second to get going, but when it gets going, it's a lot more aggressive than this one. This one, like the second you touch the pedal, it already goes, but it's not as aggressive, like it's weird. But these are the 2013 and older P3s. They did not have the fast shifting added from first to third gears. The 2014, the one I have, the other one that I'm saying it was aggressive, it has fast shifting on it, but for some reason it's a lot more aggressive shifting. So I don't know what the deal is, why it's, it, I mean, maybe the fast shifting added that aggressiveness to the car. It was like that when it was stock, like before I even upgraded the valve body to the high pressure one. So, you know, I don't know why it is like that, but uh, this one is just regular mechanical, you know, no fast shifting, electronic fast shifting added or anything to it, and it's really smooth. Uh, driving this one the 2013 and 12 models it's a lot it's a lot smoother uh so mine is a lot more aggressive even when i bought it when it was stuck before doing anything to it it was a lot more aggressive than this one uh it took a second for some reason i don't know why it takes a second when you floor it it takes like a second to get going compared to this one you, the second you touch the gas pedal it just goes so i don't know but uh that's the two differences i noticed between the two cars but for now uh, as the test drive goes it's good no check engine light no any lights at all on the dash you know it's kind of refreshing you know <laughs> compared to my older ones i really <laughs> i'm really starting to dislike the old p2s uh you know i really like them when when i actually when we fixed the first one that i got on my channel the first project one we fixed it i liked it you know after we got everything sorted but this one is starting to annoy me like it's just getting to a point where, like, when, I'm, when i'm like why am i even wasting my time on it when i could just you know modify and just work on my p3 and not bother but you know it's part of the process i mean i have some content for you guys but at the same time it's just really annoying i'm spending a lot of money that i don't really have so yeah 
but yeah I've been driving the car a little more and the car seems fine it's really <laughs> wow huh I don't know if it's the rust on the rotors that built up over the last month of the car standing outside but I kind of felt some pulsation when I brake. Let me do it again. That's a little less. Maybe it is actually the buildup. So I'll let her drive it for a little while and double check it one more time, make sure her rotors, because she has the, I believe, slaughtered and drilled rotors in this car. So it shouldn't be warped. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, the car drives perfect. You know, it's always refreshing driving this car. I love this car. The color is just so unique. Man, I kind of regret not buying because I saw one bone stock uh, for sale at that time. They wanted it even more for the than the same year as my red one, 2014. But uh, and they had more miles, the blue one. But they were asking more for it, and the red one had a lot of upgrades already. So I kind of figured, like, yeah, I'm not about to pay for a bone stock one more than I'm gonna pay for the red one with mods. Same exact car. And I think mine, the red one was platinum and the blue one was just a regular one. So it was a no brainer looking at the mods and looking at the, you know, the, the, the trim level. So, but yeah, the color is just, you can't beat this color. I, I love this color and I think I even like it a little more than my red one. I'm always going to like this blue color. It's just rebel blue is just something else. Uh, everybody get compliments everywhere you go like everybody is like shocked that it's a Volvo in this kind of color so nobody really expects it so yeah uh, the car is great uh, I thought I'd make this video for all of you guys uh, because I never seen anybody do any kind of uh, fuel pump access or any fuel related things on a p3 on one of these cars uh, so I just decided to make it I thought it would help you guys out um, because you know i couldn't find anything you maybe some of you guys may find it boring but uh, maybe some of you guys will find it useful um i was working on a car and i thought you know why not make a video about it so uh i was uh, i'm waiting i got another update on the the red volvo uh, with the wheel situation and everything uh, i'll once i get a I will get it all sorted out by the end of the week next this week so i'll have a video up next next friday or saturday uh, on that subject but uh, for now this is gonna be pretty much the end of this video so thank you guys uh, for watching this video uh, hit the like button uh, subscribe to the channel uh, tell your friends about it you know anyone who enjoys cars uh, if I'm gonna be selling and buying cars I'm gonna be posting videos you know I'm not you know like oh Volvo's and that's it you know I, I like cars I had all kinds of cars in my life so I may end up with another you know tuner car or something of some sort uh, most likely will keep my Volvo's because I put a lot of time and money into them especially the newer ones the red one so I most likely won't be selling it but I may add another car you know once the economy everything opens up and you know I get back on my feet but yeah again thank you guys for watching hit the like button subscribe to the channel and as usual see you next time